Things are gonna get crazy. No, I'm just kidding. But we are crazy quilting today. I'm Nikki, this is Pin Cut Sew, and boy do I have a really fun tutorial for you. And once you learn this technique, you'll be able to crazy quilt pretty much anything. Because remember, any project can be a quilt project if you want it to be. So let's jump right in. If you were alive in the 90s, you'll probably remember there was kind of a crazy quilting craze back then. My mom was doing it, I know. And I actually have this book Let's see, when was this published? I got this at a used bookstore last year. This was published in, oh, 2001. I'm really surprised by that. American School of Needlework. Huh, okay, well this is a really 90s look in my most humblest of opinions. So there was a lot of like velvets and see the little metal charms? Maybe it was reprinted in 01. Or maybe, actually, you know what? 2001 is not actually that far away from the 90s. It was probably just still popular at the time. Anyway, <laughs> you can see there was a lot of like rich fabrics and rich colors and velvets and embroidery and ribbons and trims and lace. And it was kind of like a Victorian trend, I think. But this, I have sort of like modernized the technique a little bit, not just me, other people have done it too. Crazy quilting is actually really simple and you really don't need all of the trims and things unless you want to put those on there. But I really like to use this technique because number one, it's an easy scrap buster way to make something interesting. Number two, you don't have to pre-cut or measure anything, which is my personal favorite part about it. Number three, you can take it on the road with you. You can actually hand sew crazy quilt and that is actually how I learned. I went on a road trip with my husband for an anniversary a few years ago, and I learned to make these little crazy quilt blocks on a muslin foundation. And so I just brought with me a bin of scraps, a needle and thread and scissors, and I made these blocks. And then when I got home, I turned the other ones, I think I'd had four of them, and I turned three of them into these journal covers. I just added to it. I just turned it catty corner, and then I added to it until it was big enough for this pattern. You can find this pattern on my um, in my shop and also there's a video I'll link to for sure. After that I started realizing you can turn crazy quilt blocks in all kinds of things. A few weeks ago I made this baby bib video, remember this? Showed you how to quilt as you go a baby bib and then I had this one also as an example. Isn't this cute? And a lot of you were really interested in this crazy quilting tutorial. So the way I'm going to do this today is I'm going to show you the basic crazy quilting process so that then you'll know how to do this on anything and I did these by machine. You don't have to hand stitch crazy quilting. I decided to crazy quilt these little pumpkin coasters. Aren't they cute? So this is what I'm gonna do an example of today but by the time it's over you will understand how crazy quilting works and you'll be able to do your own thing. Thang with an A. But I went the extra mile obviously and I made you this free printable pumpkin template. Um, you can go get this on my website for zero dollars in my shop. And this is just the pattern piece that I drew for my pumpkin coasters. So you don't have to do it yourself, but it would be really fun to do it yourself. Okay, so yeah, I think all you need is a little scrap of batting and some fabric scraps. And we can jump right in and get started. Okay, please forgive the tile mortar all over my hands. We are in the middle of tiling a bathroom wall and my husband's wet saw gave out. So we had to go rent another one. And that is the reason I have time to film this video today. Okay, so I have made this little pumpkin template and I'm actually gonna put this for free on my website so you can go download it. But also you can just draw your own pumpkin or you can have the little ones in your house draw you a pumpkin shape. I think it'd be cute to make some tall, some fat, whatever. But I'm gonna use the same one because I'm gonna make three identical coasters for my fall coffee table. So what else you're gonna need is just scraps of fabric. I sort of just pulled out of my little scrap bin fall looking strips. I like fall colors that are like blues, some peachy pinks, orange, black and white of course, things like that. I don't really love the traditional brown and orange look. So I added some colors to that. I think the blue and the peach make it a little bit more modern. And so those are the scraps that I pulled out. And then you're gonna need some felt for your stem. I pulled out some fun colors. And you're just gonna need a scrap of batting. Let me move my Fritos so I can get mine. And here's what you do. Well, first let me cut out a square. And this is what you would do for any crazy quilting project. You're gonna cut out, basically you're gonna make your own piece of fabric to then cut out your shape out of. So if you were making the baby bib, 
you would crazy quilt a big enough piece of batting to cut out your baby bib pattern. If you were gonna make a book sleeve, you would cut out a piece big enough, like bigger than the piece you need to cut your book sleeve out of. Oh, crazy quilting is always done on a foundation. So even this block that I hand pieced, it's on a piece of muslin foundation. And then you stitch each piece to it and space it together so that you can flip it up and you can have a square piece. Otherwise things get kind of wonky, especially if you're hand sewing. And so this time, since it's sort of a quilt as you go little pumpkin, I'm going to use the batting as the foundation. Some crazy quilting, like in the crazy quilting book I have, it's paper pieced, which I think is interesting. It kind of takes the crazy out of the crazy quilt in my opinion. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna pick a little fabric for my center. See, I have the little flowers here. I think in this one, I'm gonna make the little daisy, the center. Okay, so you don't just wanna cut it out a square. I mean, you can, but it's much more interesting. Like here I did, I think it's called a penta, pentagon, pentagram? No, pentagram is the witchcraft thing. Is it a pentagon, a shape with five sides? Okay, so I'm just going to make sure that it has several sides and that it's, I'm not cutting too close to the flower. Okay, so I think I made one, two, three, four, five, six sides on this one. And I'm going to put it right here in the middle. Then I'm going to take a tiny strip of fabric. Might wanna cut them down for these first few parts. And I'm going to line this straight line up with one of the straight lines on my shape and I'm going to go stitch it a quarter inch seam. Okay, I stitched it. Now I'm going to press it open. I was politely informed when I put this mini iron when it was new and my wool mat in a video that you should never use your mini iron and wool mat on your cutting mat because it will warp it, especially if you're using steam. So I never use steam, but also I don't put it on my mat. I have not had any problems with the heat affecting my wood table though. But I'm not willing to risk my cutting mat, so there's a little tidbit for you. Okay, so I have the first side sewn on, and now I'm going to find another strip. Ooh, I like this one. You can iron it if it bothers you. And I'm going to line that up with my next spot. And it's going to, I'm going to make sure that it covers not only my flower center, but also this other strip that I already sewed on. And I'm going to go sew this one on next. Okay, you can cut this off if you want to. Things can get pretty bulky if you don't ever cut them off. So I sometimes do. All right, I think I'm also gonna cut this a little bit skinnier. Okay, let me pick the next one. Let's see, I have this black and white strip and I still have a piece of this side left. So I'm gonna just make sure that this one covers my flower side and this fabric that I put on here. Okay, and now I can open that one up and press. Okay, I have a few more sides and then I'll show you what to do next. Since this shows through the white, I'm definitely gonna trim that one off. Okay, this one's gonna go here. Let's see, I'll trim this guy. Have this tiny orange strip. We'll put that one here. Okay, it's kind of covered up now. So all my little corners are covered, but I do, I, I personally know that I did have a corner there. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew a strip there anyway. I'm going to just, I don't wanna cover up all of this linen, but the pieces will be getting smaller as I go. So this one is gonna go here. Okay. So you can see how these started out as pretty big strips, but actually only a small part of them is gonna show, just like in this one. So now I'm gonna keep going. And when you add strips next, you wanna sort of find a straight spot that needs covered. So I think I'm gonna put a strip across here and I wanna make sure that when I place a strip, I place it so that it's definitely covering where I stop stitching here because you don't want any accidental bare pieces of batting like this, you know? That's hard to fix later. So let me find a little bit longer of a strip. I think I'll use a green. Cut some of this off. I'm going to place it so that it sort of creates a wonky effect here. Yep. And flip that open and press. Okay, starting to be kind of cool. So now that you have 
your center medallion made, you can really just sort of judge where you want to put your next strips as long as you're avoiding making holes. I mean, leaving holes. You do this one next and then the, the farther you go around it, the longer strips you're going to need. So I'm going to make this strip go this way, making sure I'm covering all my intersections. So when this happens, see I sewed all the way across there and I don't really want that to show through my peach. So I'm going to seam wrap it a little bit. You don't have to, but I just don't like the dark ones showing through and it only takes a sec. All right, let's see what's next. Ooh, I like this blue. Do I have enough? I think I'll put this blue piece across here. That might be all I need over here. That blue one sort of covers it. And some of that will be cut off because of my pumpkin shape. Okay, so where's that flowery piece? I like this one. Kind of want it to be more crooked than that. I'm gonna put it this way. All right, I hope you're understanding kind of how this works. Oh, I ran out of bobbin thread. Dig it. Try again. Okay, as I was saying, I hope you're understanding how this works. You're just gonna keep adding strips until your whole piece is covered. I definitely don't want this entire thing, that whole corner to be the flower, so cut that a little shorter. If you are a quilt perfectionist and this makes your eyes twitch, I understand, but just give it a try anyway. There's so much creativity here. It's really fun just not to have to measure anything, not to really care if things are certain size. No pre-cutting. Okay, that's not quite long enough to cover my green one. But if I put a strip here, then that'll take care of it. And I really want to use this. So I'm going to put this one on next. Okay, I definitely think I need some more of this, but I think I want it over here. Let's see if I have any blue. Here's a blue. Now that I have kind of, uh, now it's kind of a triangle. I can just sort of add strips at will and not need to go around in a circle so much. So I definitely want more of this color. And I need to cover some seams here. So what if I put this one here? So let's see what I want to do over here. I like these dots. Let me make this one go this way. See how this blue piece was so big and it looked like it was gonna end up large, but it's actually ended up pretty small. So if you feel like something's too big, don't worry, it kind of takes care of itself. Let's see, how am I doing? I think I really just need one more, maybe two more over here. Okay, My pumpkin, perfect fit. Nothing left off, no exposed corners of batting. So I think I'm ready to cut out my pumpkin. So here's what I'm gonna do. I have my crazy quilt piece ready. I'm going to cut out my pumpkin, making sure I'm all the way on my fabric. I want my flower in the middle and it is. Let me find my pins. Alrighty, and I'm gonna cut it out. Okay, so before I sew it all together with the backing, I need to, oh, look how cute, oh my gosh. I need to make a stem. So to make the stem, I just use felt. I think I'll use the blue for this one. And here's the little stem piece. This will be included on the little printable. My printable is pretty primitive. Look, it's on scrap paper. There's a dull eyeball on the back. But yours will look better, I promise. I'm just gonna cut two of these. I try to cut pretty carefully because they're not gonna get turned right side up. They're gonna get sewn together this way. These little Fiskars are the best for detail cutting. These are the best that I've found. I'll link you to them. Just plain old Fiskars, they're not expensive. Okay, I'm gonna just go edge stitch my stem together. This one I used orange and I used a decorative stitch. And yeah, I think I'm gonna do that again. Okay, the decorative stitch I'm using is just the one that looks like three stitches on top of each other. So it creates like a, a thicker row of stitching. Okay, and I ran out of the orange thread, so I used green. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to pin this this way. I'm actually going to snip the center of it so that I can fold it, sort of fold it in the shape of the pumpkin top like this. No, that's not right. I'm gonna snip the pumpkin. Snip the pumpkin, the stem is fine. So right at the top of the pumpkin there where the little crease goes right here, I'm going to spread the pumpkin to where it fits the stem. Okay, you can baste that in place if you feel like you need to. Otherwise, you're just going to find a 
piece of fabric to put on the back of your pumpkin. I'm gonna use this cool fall acorns. Get out of the way. You're not going to cut your pattern out of this. We're going to stitch the pumpkin to it and then we will cut it out. So we're going to leave an opening at the bottom for turning it. This is the same way you would make the baby bib if you were doing the crazy quilted baby bib. Um, you can follow the tutorial for that, like I said, on, uh, I posted a few weeks ago, but I'll put it again in the description and up there in the corner too. So you can find that and you can find the baby bib pattern on my website and in my shop. Okay, so I'm gonna go stitch this together, starting here and ending here. Pivot. Okay, some of these curves might be a little bit bulky when I turn it, so I'm just going to trim them a little bit closer. Now I can reach inside, in between my backing and my front, not in between your batting, in between the backing and your piece together front. Turn it right side out. Okay, got her turned right side out. Give it a good press. Make sure my stem got caught in there like it's supposed to. I do think this mini iron works really well. I've been very impressed with it. It's just the Sharper Image brand. It's not fancy or expensive, but it's working for me. Maybe someday I'll upgrade to one that has an auto off. But otherwise, I just plug it into my power strip that powers my entire setup basically so that I don't forget to turn it off. Okay, I'm gonna tuck the, 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 the hole, the, oh, the raw edge. <laughs> in there as if I had sewn it and pressed that really good. I'm going to edge stitch, top stitch all the way around my pumpkin. Okay, there's one step left besides trimming these ugly threads. Ooh, I just remember my mom gave me this tool yesterday I wanna try. Hold on one sec. Okay, my mom, my mom just moved to my city and I'm loving it. She's my, my sewing buddy. So she had these boxes that she ordered from Wawak of waxed Taylor's chalk. And she said that they're steam removable. So once you draw on there with this steam from your iron removes them. She said the yellow, she's had trouble getting out, but the white comes right out with steam. So she gave me a few because I don't like to use marking tools like my yellow one on here because I don't want to wash it right away. Honestly, sometimes things just don't come out. So I either use washi tape to mark lines, but these are curved. So on this one, I just guessed. <laughs> but on this one, I'm gonna try this Taylor's chalk. So I'm just gonna mark some lines. You want your first ones to be, to make like a center wedge. So they go this way. And then you're going to make the outer ones go out and also meet in the center. These lines will be on the pattern piece, of course so that you have those pumpkin shapes like this. All right, I can sort of see those, so let me go sew them, and then we'll see if it really does steam out. We'll see. It's like magic. Oh my gosh, I gave it one puff of steam with my iron and these darker lines all came out. I can't see the lighter ones, but look how cute. Okay, now I'm remembering I did round this one a little bit more. So on the pattern piece I'm gonna make, I will I will round this one too. Oh, this one's cute, it was kind of squarish. All right, now I have two pumpkin coasters. I think I need to make one or two more and then I'll have a whole set. I really hope you enjoyed this and I hope that you're inspired to try some crazy quilting. It really can apply to absolutely any project that you wanna do. It's a fun way to use up your little scraps and it's a great way to make gifty items without needing to go buy like a yardage of fabric is if all you have is small pieces. So yeah, let me know in the comments what you thought about this video and if you're gonna try it and if you like crazy quilting and if you don't. And yeah, make sure to give this video a thumbs up so you don't miss the next ones. And I'll see y'all soon, bye. Shoot, I thought my husband was back with the tile saw, but he's not. I have time. Tell you what, renovating a house is not for wusses. Since we no longer have a working tile saw though, maybe next time we don't have to do the tile ourselves, huh? <laughs> Instead of buying another one, we'll just hire someone else to do 